This teaching was part of a series meant for the Manila programs. Because of COVID-19, John Carter now brings this message from his Los Angeles studio. Visitors from other worlds opens up fascinating information about the wonders of the universe. Here is John Carter. Hello, friend. I'm John Carter in Southern California. And today I'm talking about the most amazing subject. I'm talking about amazing discoveries in the universe. Visitors from other worlds, you're going to be absolutely amazed. Listening to a political commentator on CNN, I think it was CNN, just a few days ago here in the United States, and he said, you can't have your own facts. He said, and a lot of people say, you know, I've got facts and you've got facts, but my friend, you can't have alternative facts. Facts are facts are facts. You can have an opinion, but your opinion may be right, but it may be wrong. But what we need to discover is the truth and the facts. And today we're talking about facts. Somebody else said this statement, and it is absolutely so true. This person said, it's almost impossible to get someone to see something if his salary depends upon his not seeing it. <laughs> or if he's a politician and he's trying to get re-elected. It's almost impossible to get someone to see something if his salary depends upon his not seeing it. Today we're going to take you into the heavens. We're going to show you some amazing wonders as we talk about visitors from other worlds. That's an ancient prophecy. It is totally amazing. And you're going to enjoy this program today. I want to send greetings today to my friends right around the world, but especially my friends in the great city of Manila. We were planning to come to see you and run a great series of meetings. But then COVID-19 came along and it stopped us. But we hope that one day we can get back and see you. We send you greetings today, all of you, and especially the president of the Philippines. We have so many wonderful people. We want to touch base with you again. But today I'm talking about the amazing, the astounding wonders of our universe. You're going to enjoy this. Let me talk a bit about the big issues of life. This is not important. This is super important. The big issues of life. Who am I? Am I a who or am I a what? Am I a machine? Am I an animal or am I a child of God? Uh, I've been to Russia on many occasions. Uh, I think about 50 times. And when I went there, I saw the results of the great communist revolution. It sent a chill down my spine. I've got something here that will interest you. This is a spike which I had gilded. It is a spike taken from the railway line called the Trans-Siberian Railway Line. I think it's the longest railway line in the world. And over that railway line traveled at least 10 million innocent people on their way to death in Siberia and other places like Magadan. Ever heard of Magadan? It's a city in Russia's Far East. If you go there today, it's nothing like it used to be. It used to be an atheistic death camp for dissidents, people like you and people like me and people who didn't follow the party line. It was a city of hell and the roads were paved. Wait for this. This is true. The roads in Magadan were paved with human bones because Stalin and the rest of his cohorts taught that man was not a person, but basically he was an animal, he was a machine, and he could be disposed of. Do you know how many people they killed in the great Soviet Union? 
the great atheistic experiment. They killed, I'm told, up to 70 million people. The Chinese killed about 40 or 50 million people because they refused uh, to conform to the party line, which taught that man was a machine or man was an animal. And when I spoke to literally millions of atheists in the old Soviet Union in big meetings right across that country, I would tell them every night, you are not an animal. You are not a machine. You are a child of God and you are distinct and glorious. You are important because God made you. So here are the great philosophical questions. Where did I come from? Why am I here and where am I going? Am I a who or am I a what? The most important statement that was ever made in the history of humanity was made by a prince in the land of Egypt uh, about oh, three and a half, yeah, about three and a half thousand years ago. And it is found in in the book of books, it is found in the ancient Hebrew scriptures. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Listen, these are the most important words ever spoken, ever written. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so I told the atheists and the communists, and the professors at Moscow University, you are not a thing. You are a child of God because there is a creator God and he made you and he loves you. This is just a little aside. This statement was made, as I mentioned, by a mighty Egyptian prince around 1500 BC. An amazing person. An amazing person, a great scholar. Uh, we've even seen the tombs of that period. I've been there and I have explored them. We have seen them. We've even seen what we believe could be the remains of his foster mother, though we are not dogmatic on that point. But we think his foster mother was the great queen of ancient Egypt, whose name was Hatshepsut. We saw her temples. We saw the glory we saw Tutmosis the third, Moses' great rival. And Moses, we believe, uh, inspired by a mighty force outside of himself, said the tremendous words, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Listen to me, what I told uh, the Russian scientists and I say respectfully to you, the Bible teaches that there was a beginning and in that beginning, the universe came into being. That is a fact. Let me talk about the origin of the universe. There have been a number of views held concerning the origin of the universe. One of those views was hardly held today by a single scientist. It's a debunked theory. It was believed until relatively recently by all of the scientific world, including Albert Einstein, who saw the folly of his ways and gave it up. It is called the steady state theory. It simply says that the universe had never, never been created. It had been there for trillions and trillions of years. So there was no beginning and there certainly would be no ending. I've got a tremendous picture. I'm going to put it up here on the screen. It's, it's a picture that almost gives me goosebumps. It's a picture of Professor Hubble and the great Einstein and they're discovering, at least Hubble is explaining to the great, great Einstein that the universe had a beginning because they had discovered, Hubble had discovered and some other scientists, but it basically went back to Hubble, that the universe is expanding. It's expanding at almost the speed of light. And if it is expanding, it is proof that there was a beginning. And so today, uh, nobody believes, well, hardly, I don't think 
hardly anybody believes in the steady state theory, which is so necessary for the process of evolution to take place because you need trillions and trillions of years. More recently, scientists came to the viewpoint that the universe, yes, through Hubble, and then the acceptance of Einstein, but after the steady state theory came the Big Bang Theory. Now, I have some Christian friends and they say to me, this makes me nervous to talk about the Big Bang. Don't worry about it, my friend. You can just say the beginning of everything. But the Big Bang Theory says this, that at one time there was no such thing as time. <laughs> There was no such thing as matter. And all of a sudden, there was a tremendous, a tremendous start to the universe. And they call it the Big Bang. Firstly, the term Big Bang was used as a, a sense of derision. Uh, such a silly idea, some said. But it was very much like the idea which is taught in the Bible. As I told the professors at Moscow University, and they said, yes, it is true. This idea of a beginning, which scientists call somewhat with a sense of humor, the Big Bang, when the universe was started out of nothing, was created by a tremendous force, out of nothing and has been expanding ever since. And they would tell you with some validity that this started 13.8 billion years ago, which is, wait for this, this is relatively recent in the history of God. Because God has no beginning, but relatively recently, there was a tremendous event and the universe came into being. That idea today is believed by almost every scientist on the face of the earth. It's an amazing idea because a beginning, wait for this, a beginning implies a beginner. Did you get this? Let me say it again. Let me spell it out as plain as I can. A beginning implies a beginner. And that is why so many people didn't want to believe in this idea because a beginning implies a beginner. That is why the text that we read is so incredibly important. Let me talk for a moment now about the prevailing worldview. This is taught by many, many people who really are not following the facts. They're simply expressing their opinion. But the prevailing worldview teaches that there is no God. This is what is taught in most secular universities. There is no God. There is no personal creator. I say once again, this is being taught in most of our universities. This is not science. Are you listening to me? This is not science. This is simply a new religion and a different philosophy. But let me tell you what it teaches, because you'll find that this is quite mind-boggling. Nothing produced everything. You say, that's crazy. Yes, it is. Non-life produced life. You say, that's crazy. Unconsciousness produced consciousness. You say, that, that's absolutely crazy. Chaos produced information. This is what is taught today by some of the great scientists in the world, like Dr. Richard Dawkins, who does not believe in the beginning God created. Randomness produced fine-tuning. Non-reason produced reason. You say, that's a crazy idea. The Bible says... Uh, in the beginning was the word, the logos. In the beginning was the intelligence. In the beginning was the mind. And the mind was with God. And the mind was God. The Bible teaches that nothing starts from chaos. Nothing starts from randomness. The Bible teaches that a great mind, uh, which is called uh, the center of intelligence, the logos, he was the person who said, uh, let there be light, let there be a 
universe. We call this view. I say this with no apologies. It is the truth. We say this worldview is the new insanity. It is the new religion. And this is why, my friend, I tell you, this is why Western civilization today is in decline and is in great trouble. This is why we have so many suicides. People say, what is the purpose of living? I am something, nothing. There is no beginning for, of my relationship with uh, the creator and therefore there is no life. There is no life beyond the grave. I'm simply a bizarre accident. All I am, people say, is I'm the product of time plus matter plus chance. So if you have enough time and if you have enough matter and if you have enough chance, you'll have a human being. This is the new insanity. Is it any wonder that tens of thousands of young people and others here in these great United States can't face the prospect of life under those circumstances and they commit suicide? Suicide has become the badge, and I'm quoting some great philosopher, suicide has become the badge of our despair. That's the new religion. It's not based upon facts. It is based upon erroneous deductions. It is a new religion of despair. Let me quote you from a, a great British scientist, one of the world's greatest. This is Sir Fred Hoyle, a famous, famous astronomer. Just listen up, please. Life cannot have had a random beginning. The likelihood of the spontaneous formation of life from inanimate matter is one to a number with 40,000 noughts after it. A nought is a zero. In other words, it's a zero idea. It's absor absurd, says Sir Fred Hoyle. It is big enough, this crazy idea, that's... He didn't say crazy idea, I said it. It is big enough to bury Darwin and the whole theory of evolution. There was no primordial soup, as some scientists say in their desperation. There was no primordial soup, neither on this planet nor on any other. And if the beginning of life were not random, they, they, they must therefore have been the product, they must therefore have been the product of purposeful intelligence. Would you please look at this? Life cannot have had a random beginning. The likelihood of the spontaneous formation of life from inanimate matter is one to a number with 40,000 noughts or zeros. It's crazy. 40,000 noughts after it. But the Bible says something completely different to this. It says it wasn't a case of randomness. It says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So the Bible says there was a time when there was no time. There was a time when there was no universe. And it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Look at this, my friend. This is the greatest statement that has ever been made in the history of the human race. And there's another great statement. It's Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, written by the same author. I want you to notice it. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Let it sink down into the molecules of your mind. Then God said... Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Listen, watch. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. 
male and female he created them the bible tells me i am not a son of the slime i didn't come down from the trees i came down from the stars as I told so many Russian atheists and the professors at Moscow University, you are important. You are precious. Every life is tremendously important because you are not just a thing. You are a child of God. So you see, I want you to know this. Don't let anybody put you down. Don't let anybody say to you, life is chaos and just full of randomness and there's no meaning to life. Don't, don't be sucked into that deception, my friend. The proof of the matter is this. There was a point of creation. That is a scientific fact. That is not an opinion, brother, sister. And not only did God make this universe, he made you, and he made you distinct and glorious. And around the world, as people accept this truth, they become re-energized. They have a new outlook on life. They become filled with optimism because they realize they came from the hand of God, and by the grace of God, one day they will go back to God. You are important. God has a plan for your life. Are you listening to me today? Can you hear this? Do you think that you lost it all alone? Nobody cares about you. I've got a message for you. You are important. God made you. The God who made the stars made you. Now, today, are you still listening? Here it comes. I'm going to give you some evidence that demands a verdict. It's not theological evidence, it is scientific evidence. Now some people say, like Richard Dawkins, you've got faith, I've got evidence. No, my friend, I've got a faith that is built upon evidence. I don't have faith in faith, I have faith in the evidence. I have a faith that is built upon fact. It's not just an opinion. In a court case, you hear the evidence. Then you decide on the basis of the evidence. You give the verdict. I want you to give the verdict. I want you to notice now in this program, the evidence for God from the world of science. I want you to hear the evidence, render your verdict. The court is now in session. Are you ready, my friend? The court is now in session. The evidence for the creator God. Evidence number one. This is pretty amazing. When I first heard this, I just couldn't believe it. But it's true. Evidence number one. Are you ready for this? You've got to put on your thinking caps. I'm today, I'm appealing to the intellect in here. I'm appealing to your intellect. And we're going to give you reasons why you can believe. Evidence number one, I'm going to give you three pieces of evidence that will blow you away. Evidence number one, the magic balance of the big four. What on earth am I talking about? Evidence number one, the magic balance of the big four. Listen, a millisecond after the point of creation that scientists call the Big Bang, they say it happened 13.8 billion years ago. That's relatively recent as far as the creator God is concerned because he has no beginning and he has no end. Four great forces came into being. Gravity, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, and electromagnetism. I'm going to say this again because this is pretty amazing. One millisecond after the point of creation, after this tremendous explosion that created the cosmos, four great forces came into being, I believe, created by Almighty God. 
These forces had not existed before. Without those forces, you wouldn't exist now. Gravity, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, and electromagnetism. Now listen, these forces hold the universe together. And there's something quite amazing about these forces. And if these forces were not balanced to a degree of one and a... Oh, I'll tell you that in a moment. But we're just going to take a, a little tiny break so you can digest what you've heard so far. Because I know I'm giving you plenty of solid stuff. But stay with me as we talk about evidence for God. Not from a church, but from the world of science. Hard, cold facts. Not opinions, but facts. Stay with me. We'll be back soon. The word began in a village. Churches and schools sprang up and multiplied, reaching into the city. Great truths revealed to the people of Papua New Guinea, changing thousands of lives. Our eyes are going to be opened to the discovery of amazing truths. The greatest truth in the Bible, it is the truth that God loves you. It has completely changed my life and I'm going to be baptized this Sabbath. Pastor Kata has put something in my heart that I will never forget. Thank you, Pastor Kata, for your program. It has changed my life completely. John Carter's Great Truths Revealed was recorded live from Papua New Guinea. Experience the miracles in this 21 DVD series for a gift of $150 US or $210 Australian. To order, visit our website or call. You can now find the Carter Report anywhere, anytime, on any Android or Apple device. Use your cell phone, tablet, computer, or TV to access the many inspirational messages from Pastor Carter 24-7. For Apple users, go to the App Store. For Android users, go to Google Play and download the free Carter Report app. The Carter Report also has an official YouTube and Vimeo channel. Search for The Carter Report and find the topic that speaks to you. Roku users, simply search for The Carter Report and download the app free. The same on Amazon Fire. For Apple TV, visit the App Store and download the app. Reach out to The Carter Report and experience the hope, faith, and love of Jesus Christ. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.